Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, as always, I hope that this message finds you well. Um, you may be wondering why I haven't been as vocal of late, and it just dawned on me. Um, you know, I, I, I love doing my podcasts, if, if only to help inspire you all to take the, the next step, uh, recognize the power that you have within you, and that sometimes the information you've been given in the past about you and your body might be incorrect. So yeah, so it dawned on me the other day, like I've been feeling a bit of resistance to, to doing my podcast. And um, the, the, the reason I do the podcast is to try and give you a sort of balanced overview of success stories, uh, speak to certain people that I think you might find helpful and inspiring, and, and also just to kind of share my thoughts and feelings on my own journey, which I think, again, might might keep you kind of uplifted and inspired on the way. But as I say, I've noticed um, I've got another success story about to be uploaded shortly, but I noticed there was the distinct lack of my voice recently. And it got me thinking as to because I, as you know, if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, I journal every morning as I wake up and and it, it occurred to me, like, why am I resisting doing my podcast? Because I have literally two full pages of titles and, and stories that I want to share with you that I think will, will keep you kind of, um, as I say, inspired and on track. And it, it occurred to me that um, somebody that I reviewed quite closely in my circle, as and I would even go so far as to say as a friend, a bleak uh, uh, coach, business coach of mine, had I, it, it, it came up for me that um, there was a, a conversation that we'd had and there'd been some kind of... Um, I say underhand remark made about you know what it is that I do and why that I do it and why did I need to keep producing more books and why did I need to do my podcast and why did I need to create more programs and it's funny isn't it how it, it occurred to me that we can gobble up other people's words sometimes without even being aware of it and and normally the telltale signs that you're gobbling up somebody else's words and allowing them to penetrate you is when you feel resistance to something. It's amazing how many uh, women on the journey will find resistance to different things at different points. And, and while she could sort of, you know, beat yourself up and berate yourself saying, oh, I just need to do it and I should be doing it. I always think that word should uh, is very telling. Uh, there's that phrase of, you know, stop shooting all over yourself. But, but the, the point I'm trying to make is it's interesting how we can become unaware of other people's influence on us from a, in, a, in a deep subconscious level if we're not awake and aware to our environment, to the people that are in our environment. And, and I guess the, the intentions behind certain people and why they say what they say um, I've since parted company with this particular business coach because I didn't end up feeling that they were a good fit for me or how shall I say this politely, that they weren't heart centered. And that's what's really important to me with whoever I align with now or whoever is in my circle or whoever I interact with. It's something that took me decades, probably into my late 40s, early 50s to really recognize the importance of um, the people being around me being what I refer to as the knights of the round table, you know, like the King Arthur story, he had his knights of the round table that would come to the table and they would offer impartial advice, but be very supportive of the mission in inverted commas. And of course, if you don't already know, my mission is to help educate and inform and of course, inspire uh, you, the listener and millions of other women around the world who are just trapped in uh, pain and misery that you don't need to be trapped in. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, again, another, um, how should I say this, politely, group of people who masquerade as helping women with endometriosis 
um, have on their, their front web page this terrifying, frightening, uh, disturbing story of, of this poor woman, um, you know, who's, who's had one of many uh, side effects to, to the, the invasive surgical procedures that, that, that's promoted. Uh, and as I say, um, I've had a, you know, a couple of clients recently sort of recognize that some advice that they got prior to coming into the, the community and, and working with my team absolutely terrified them and not only terrified them but also was incorrect and and they were the the people be giving them this advice was misinformed and i just kind of want to jump on here today and and say you know we're we're not none of us are impartial to to being influenced by people that are around us but i encourage you always to journal in the morning as you wake up because that gives you this access to this inner wisdom this inner guidance as to you know, who is influencing me or what is influencing me? And is that influence, you know, helpful or harmful? Um, or am I absorbing other people's words and allowing it to um, affect my behavior or affect my pro progress? And, if they, and the same thing goes for endometriosis. Um, you know, there, there's so much misinformation out there. In fact, there's just too much information and you can get lost and drowned in it. And this is why I always encourage women to start by reading my book, just because it gives, gives you a measure of whether or not you relate and understand and connect with, with my journey, my story, because at least that gives you that sort of first foothold on the ladder, on, uh, on the pathway to, to understanding the root causes. But it surprises me just how many people are spouting off all this information without any substance to it. And invariably, um, a lot of women that are, a lot of people that are around women with endometriosis haven't necessarily had it or even had a period to themselves. So my message to you is if you're listening to this, you're certainly a, a progressive forward-thinking woman anyway. You're pioneering in your own, your own endeavor because the fact is you're taking this different pathway. My mission, my vision is to make sure that you know, before I die, that this pathway is not just an in inverted commas, an alternative pathway. It is something to be seriously considered. But when, but if you find yourself, you know, in conflict, in distress, in fear, and in anxiety, it's probably because somewhere, somehow, you're maybe gobbling up the words of other people. Now, there's no need to shame yourself or feel bad or feel guilty. The very fact if you become aware of it, I view that as half the battle of reclaiming your power and separating from that. So be very, very mindful who is telling you what and whether or not you're taking that in as fact. As I say, each and every woman, if you cut your finger and it has the capacity to scab over and heal, then you equally have that same capacity if you understand the, the premises of you know what it takes to heal a body you have that power too now there are going to be naysayers out there there's going to be trolls there's going to be people who just for whatever reason don't want to believe that and unfortunately uh, what i've learned from my journey and and the stories that i hear from my women who are coming through my programs unfortunately it tends to be a, a lot of the um healthcare professionals who they come into contact with because of their training doesn't open them up to any other way. They just believe that the painkillers and the drugs and the surgery are the only way of managing the condition because the painkillers, drugs and surgery don't do anything to actually get to uh, understand the root causes of the condition. It's more just uh, trying to manage this, the, the signs and symptoms at best. And sadly, invariably leads to a lot more signs and symptoms and it becomes this chicken and egg. So just a short podcast today, as I say, it, it occurred to me that I um, I was influenced by this person and somehow not shamed per se, but made to feel uncomfortable that I have such passion and love for the work that I do. And I don't even view it as work. I feel that this is something that I've always uh, been destined to do. And it took me late in life to realize what my talents and my gifts were and to be able to use my sensitivity in a positive way. So if you're a woman with endometriosis and you're still in pain, there's a reason for that pain. Start with the journaling in the morning as you wake up. And, and of course, if you need help and support in any way, we are here to support you. But just be mindful of the words that are being absorbed by others and use your journaling, use your, your, your pages in the morning, that ink on the paper to really explore whether 
you know, you align with those words, you believe those words, whether they're part of you. And each and every one of you have this innate unique, uh, deep sensitivity and wisdom that um, unfortunately for, for thousands of years now, that uh, female wisdom, that goddess, inner goddess, that intuition, instincts, whatever you want to call it, is there and you know you have it. It's just that, that those around about you may have made you doubt yourself. And as I say, gobble up their words rather than listening to your own internal words. So that is my thought for the day. I do have some more podcasts that I wish to record and I hope that I've been able to personally bash through this resistance that I had because my podcast is very important um, from the feedback that I get. I very much appreciate that and of course hearing that it inspires you to take action because that is uh, the most important thing. I want you to take to ask the right questions, the empowering questions of yourself you know, don't suffer on your own if you need support and then say, what would it take to take that next massive action in a positive new pathway? So until then, look after yourself, take care and to your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.